this week. I want to talk about piano drops. I wish we could just give them more of a sense of occasion. Piano drop. Piano drop. Piano Book is a community of like-minded composers whose passion for music is matched only by our passion for sound. So much, we share it. Over 300 instruments free for our fellow music makers to use in their productions, alongside over 800 music tracks that demonstrate their potential. A great new way of browsing this treasure trove of sounds is our Instagram page. If you haven't followed that yet, well worth doing. Not only can you see all the instruments there but actually if you go into them unmute you can actually browse sounds whenever you have a spare moment if you can browse instagram you can browse piano book what i love most about the piano book community is it hears beauty in everything and anything, whether it be a rusty gate, an inability to play an instrument well, a drinks bottle, something found in a charity shop, instruments bear witness to everything and everyone who has played it, echoing decades of practice, generations of proud performance, and centuries worth of beats and measures branded into it and resonating back with every note. For me, whatever the instrument, there's always a beauty, and the secret to sampling is to find that beauty and to draw it out. Time for an introduction. I'm very lucky to have two pianos, one in the shed, one in my house. I look after them very well, but there is a third, one that I don't look after at all. It's time to bring out the gimp. A vintage Broadwood made especially for John Cuthbertson and Sons in Glasgow in 1900 and frozen to death. This beast has had the shit played out of it, has really seen better days and was about to be thrown onto a tip. We felt it only appropriate to rescue it and see this piano off with more of a dignified bang. And when I say it's had the shit played out of it, it, the elephant is falling off it. It's been played so hard, very much on its last legs. So in order to usher the very best, its inner beauty out, we thought we'd go and get some tools. Tin snips. Yeah, that sounds good. And I think we're gonna need some safety goggles as well. Just thinking more. And I have the sense I can do something with this too. We definitely need some goggles. Can we get a bag as well, please? So all we need now is a place to record it. Stuart, it's lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you How are you again. doing? I'm very well. We're Thank keeping you. appropriate distance. Yes, yeah, surviving 2020. We've brought the gimp in. And we were first just going to discuss the kind of sound that we were looking for. This has got an incredibly soft tone. It's actually quite pleasant. Well, what I had set up was as a, a sort of over the piano sound. There's a um, stereo ribbon mic, the AEA R88, which will capture the whole instrument beautifully. And there's a pair of um, Neumann U67 valve mics, which will probably position, depending on whether front panel is going to be on or off when we're sampling it. And then in the room, I'd put up a pair of DPA 4006s just to capture everything, really, in the nicest possible way. Right, okay, here we go. Here's two hours of Broadwood fun. Oh, God. I now have Spitfire Star Trace, 
which basically means even if I want to smile, I can't. We've got three different instances for the three different microphones. Okay, let's have a listen with the room mics. Really like the loud uh, layers. And then we've got the, the ribbon above. But I think my favorite is gonna be the U67, such beautiful mics. Much more present. So what's really surprising about the GIMP is for an old piano that's just about to die, it has a huge amount of warmth and resonance, which you wouldn't usually expect. The reason why pianos die, usually around the 100 year mark, is they rely on a soundboard, which is this massive piece of wood that's held under stress. So it's kind of got a slightly curved shape, which is the way wood best resonates. And this, over time, eventually relaxes to create just a very kind of flat, papery, non-resonant sound. Not the case with the GIMP, which has this amazing warmth. So I thought we'd really kind of go into this and try and draw this warmth out and thought, well, instead of felt it, how about flannel it? And here it is, the GIMP flanneled. It's really, it's like almost not a piano now. It's got such a special sound to it. So the full massive GIMP piano is available to download now in the link down below and from Pianobook. But we will also be releasing some of these experiments soon. And the best way to know when we have released that, for example, the flanneled GIMP, is to follow us on Instagram or indeed our new YouTube channel, which is going to become a massive resource for all sorts of extras and exclusives, not least piano drops, which is why we're kind of here today. But first, preparing the GIMP, not for the drop, but to make it into a prepared piano, which is the term for insertion of objects between strings, a practice that is uncommon because it's a very expensive way of ruining a perfectly good piano. Fortunately, we have the GIMP to experiment with. The phrase prepared piano was coined around the time of John Cage's experiments, putting screws and pencil erasers and bits of wood in between strings. My favorite track of this era is Amoris for prepared piano. It kind of sounds like Eric Satie played by a Balinese gamelan. But I'm sure people have been fiddling around with piano since they were invented, albeit carefully. I believe Henry Cowell was cited as a key inspiration for John Cage's experiments there. But also over in Brazil, Villa Lobos uh, was inserting bits of paper and wood between piano strings. So we decided to go with some nails. Let's just take it to Naughty Land. I'm sure it's gonna sound awesome. And then this is the nails being played by the keyboard but muted with my hand. And then this is me plucking the nails that are inserted into the strings. And I've created this multi that uses a mixture of the flannel and the hammered nails as well, just to give it a, just a little bit of something extra. Take this up. Whilst it's a real privilege to not have to worry about damaging a piano by inserting stuff between its strings, it's also a real privilege to do this. Time to get the tools out.
Okay, so time for the grand finale. Now, why are we doing this? Well, every week on our YouTube channel, subscribe to it down below, we do a thing called a piano drop where you get a selection of the best stuff that have been submitted that week and also some of our old favourites. But the YouTube channel is also going to become a resource for all sorts of extra content and tutorials about recording and sampling. So do subscribe and ding the bell on that channel if you haven't done already. So, time for the grand finale. Aberdeen, 60 foot crane, one kid who's had a good life but went out with a bang. <laughs> 